Greetings Redlings and welcome to Red Risks. In this session we demystify two essential workplace safety metrics, lost time injury frequency, LTIF, and total recordable case frequency, TRCFs. Let's explore their importance, learn how to calculate them, and discover how accurate manpower hours form the backbone of reliable safety benchmarking. And if you're new to the channel, of course, please subscribe and I can keep you updated of new videos when they're being posted. Lost time injury frequency and total recordable case frequency are critical metrics for measuring workplace safety performance. Let's dive deeper and clarify these calculations and address some common doubts, especially regarding manpower hours. My approach is based on guidelines from the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, also known as OSHA, and the ISO 45001 standard. Let's first define some of these acronyms. Lost Time Injury Frequency, or LTIF, is a metric used to measure the number of lost time injuries per 100,000 works hours. Total Recordable Case Frequency, or TRCF, measures the number of recordable injuries or illnesses per 100,000 worked hours. Both LTF and TRCF are essential for understanding and improving workplace safety benchmarks. But why are LTIF and TRCF important? Well, they help benchmark safety across industries, ensure compliance with safety regulations, and demonstrate a company's commitment to employee welfare. How do we work out lost time injury frequency and total recordable case frequency? In formula terms, lost time injury frequency is equal to the number of lost time injuries multiplied by 1 million and divided by the total manpower hours similarly total recordable case frequency is equal to the number of recordable cases multiplied by 1 million and divided by the total manpower hours each metric plays a critical role in deriving meaningful insights manpower hours include all hours worked by full-time part-time and contract employees. This encompasses regular, overtime and special project hours. Accurate tracking ensures reliable safety metrics. Hence, accurate data collection methods are crucial for calculating manpower hours. This ensures reliable results and informed decision making. What should you include? Productive hours, paid, unpaid overtime and temporary worker hours are included. What should you exclude? Sick leave and unpaid breaks are excluded. Some of the challenges in real life includes underreporting or poor tracking of hours, misclassifying contractor hours, and consolidating data across sites. Let's apply that lost time injury frequency formula. In this example, there were two lost time injuries and a total of 1.2 million total manpower hours. In this case, the answer is 1.67. That is 2 multiplied by 1 million and then divided by 1.2 million. Now an example for total recordable case frequency. In this example, there were 5 recordable cases and a total of 1.2 million total manpower hours. The total recordable case frequency in this case is 4.17. That is 5 multiplied by 1 million and then divided by 1.2 million. Some best practices for accurate data collection includes collecting manpower hour data from a single source to ensure consistency and accuracy, using software tools to track manpower hours in real time, reducing errors and improving efficiency, conducting regular audits to verify data accuracy and identify any discrepancies. It's worth noting that benchmarks vary by industry and region, and one must not fall into this trap. For example, oil and gas typically reports higher total recordable case frequency than office work sectors. It's important to know your industry standards to improve performance. Benchmark data for lost time injury frequency and total recordable case frequency can be found in industry reports such as the HSE UK industry data and the Global Safety Benchmarks report. These reports provide insights into industry-specific performance, highlighting variations by sector and region. Here's a case study example, which was featured in the Workplace Safety Journal 2022. In this example, a company improves safety performance by implementing better data tracking and enhanced safety training. These actions resulted in a 30% reduction 
in total recordable case frequency over two years. For additional insights, check out ISO 45001, which is the Occupational Health and Safety Management Standard. There's also the Occupational Safety and Health Administration Reporting Guidelines, or the OSHA Guidelines. Let's also not forget industry-specific benchmarks for oil and gas and construction and the big wide web for searching journals and technical articles. Some key takeaways are that lost time injury frequency and total recordable case frequency are crucial for safety benchmarking. It's important to know that accurate manpowers are of course essential for reliable metrics. Now thinking forward, it's important to track, audit, review and plan if we want to continuously improve our safety performance and goals. If you're new to the channel, of course, please subscribe and I can update you with videos as I upload them. But if you've been here before, of course, I welcome your thoughts and comments as of course all newcomers. It's always good to have continuous improvement when it comes to creating these videos. Thank you. Catch you on the next one.